In 1936, near Red Creek in London, Texas, something was found. It has become one of the most compelling pieces of evidence to suggest there is a lost history of Earth. Within a rock, Emma Han would notice a small piece of wood that appeared to be embedded. Finding this strange she picks up the object for a closer inspection. Not really knowing what it was, it is lucky she was curious enough about the embedded wood to take it home. Nearly a decade later, presumably after the artifact had sat in Max and Helen Han's household for many years, their son Max would spark an interest into what it could be. He breaks the rock apart, and to their amazement concealed within the stone was an ancient stone hammer. Now known as the London Hammer, the rock that once grew around it, was claimed to have stopped growing around 400 million years ago, which could only mean the hammer would be even older. What if the maker of this hammer nearly half a billion years ago, stole the design from an ancient artifact he found himself, just how old can our history be? The metal of the hammerhead has been confirmed to consist of 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and 0.74% sulfur. And since its discovery in the 1930s and its subsequent re-entry into the air, it has not rusted. Around 1983 the hammer was acquired by creationist Carly e. Barth, an active advocate of Paluxy River man tracks, and other alleged geologic anomalies, who began to call it the London Artifact. Many figures within the scientific and historical communities have strongly disagreed with the premise that the hammer be many hundreds of millions of years old, some even theorizing that the limestone in which it was discovered could have formed in just a few centuries in perfect conditions. The variation in dates put forward by creationist scientists regarding the matter has also just stoked the flames of debate, and indirectly aiding in the denial of the artifact being truly ancient. However, there are certain factors regarding this object, like so many others in this criteria, that cannot be explained by accepted academia. Firstly, it is unthinkable for the modern theory of evolution to include such artifacts, this gives the creationists a foothold, yet they lack the material to continue an argument back many millions of years. They are indeed opposite, yet both incorrect approaches. Thus, because of this, the most important features of the hammer, are conveniently ignored frequently by both sides of the modern coin. For example, the handle of the hammer is not made of wood anymore, it is now made of coal. It was once made of wood, but through a natural and unrushed process, the wood has been transformed into coal. And whatever the reasons for these inconsistencies in reports, evidently the rock strata at the site are indeed Hensel Sand member of the Travis Formation, Lower Cretaceous, Upper Absham stage, considered to be approximately 110 to 115 million years old by conventional geologists. This is fact, so by default the hammer is older, regardless of ulterior motives for publicizing such artifacts, the truth they can tell, no matter how reluctant it may be to your worldview, shouldn't be ignored. However, the age of the rock formation may be relevant to authenticity, it is irrelevant to the fact that the hammer does indeed exist. And that these artifacts create a proposition for historical data we should be approaching with open minds, if we are to progress as a species. The channel's recent expose regarding the possible true age of the Great Pyramids outlaid many fragments of evidence, strongly suggesting they predate a number of past advanced lost civilizations. However, it mistakenly overlooked a possible culprit for their construction. Numerous layers of casing stones, each once an enormous undertaking, occurred at varying times within antiquity, by different civilizations which many perceive were possible conservation efforts. Due to this, and the fact that I had so far identified at least three advanced separate civilizations elsewhere, achieved through the cooperation of nearly three years' work, focused upon cataloging unexplained advanced ruins from the past, characteristics within the techniques used to construct them, toolmark signatures left upon the stones, unique identifiable architectural design, and differentiations exclusive to particular ruins, were slowly gathered and used to identify three distinct ancient civilizations with their own unique directions of development. However, I mistakenly presume that the Cyclopean civilization was placed far closer to us than the original pyramid builders. This was put forward as a personal opinion, which mystery history reluctantly has to admit that, although based on logic, has been disproven by this very same methodology. In the video, it was stated, and I quote, 
I have never, and now strongly feel will never, find any indicative evidence of these civilizations building the footings under any of these gigantic megaliths." End quote. I had looked for a significant time for any signature stonework, linking any of the civilizations I had identified to the placement of megalithic blocks over or around the 1,000 tons mark. If I discovered these characteristics beneath such enormous stones, I would have proven that they were indeed capable and more than likely the civilization responsible for their placement, with the most significant being the building of the pyramids. There were some issues which niggled MH regarding this postulation before the following discovery, however, due to the lack of any footings, had to postulate the pyramid builders were a far more capable group. One such niggle were the matching scoop-like tool marks used by the Cyclopean civilization found in Bazda Cave, Turkey, officially proven to have been the quarry for Haran, a nearby settlement, which possessed their signature Cyclopean blockwork cuboid blocks with a raised center, synonymous with many ancient builds, with the same scoop-like tool marks also present upon the excavation of the unfinished obelisk. Yet due to the absence of footings, which would have demonstrated undeniable proof that they were indeed capable of working, moving, and placing such stones, I wrongly presume that they were incapable of such tasks. However, unlike academia, Regardless of disliking the realization that he was mistaken about something, the motive of the channel is honest research and logical deduction. Thus, admitting one's mistakes allows not only mystery history's understanding to evolve, but is the only path one can take in the pursuit of truth. The Western Wall, Wailing Wall, or Kotel as known in Islam as the Barrage Wall, is an ancient limestone wall in the old city of Jerusalem. Originally erected to its current height by Herod the Great in 19 BC, enclosing the Temple Mount in a large rectangular structure topped by a huge flat platform. The Western Wall is considered holy by both practicing Muslims and Jews. Of the four retaining walls, the Western one is considered to be closest to the former temple, which makes it the most sacred site recognized by Judaism outside the former Temple Mount Esplanade. Just over half of the wall's total height, including its 17 courses located below street level, is academically claimed to date from the end of the Second Temple period, and is commonly believed to have been entirely built around 19 BC by Herod the Great. However, the western stone, weighing around 600 tons and a few other enormous stones, all located below ground level within the base not only possesses compelling evidence of incredible antiquity, but beneath this enormous stone are the signature blocks of the civilization I named the Cyclopeans. This is evidence I wrongly presumed I would never find, demonstrating that the civilization I call the Cyclopeans were indeed capable of moving such gigantic stones. What's more, they were also capable of moving the pyramid stones, and indeed those of Baalbek, yet to be a viable suspect, due to the immense age of the pyramids, evidence would need to be found to support this, and amazingly, these foundation stones do indeed contain just that. Still embedded within holes, presumably cut for the placement of the blocks, timber chocks can be found in these foundation stones, wooden planks which have over an unimaginable amount of time petrified into coal, stone, and flint-like materials indicating a minimum age of at least 100,000 years, as such decay and petrification would not have been able to occur in the currently attested timeline. Could these stones date from the original construction of Giza's Great Pyramids? It is undoubtedly a wall many followers of certain Abrahamic monotheistic faiths hold in high regard, and one of incredible importance to them. Amazingly, however, Due to these amazing features, it is also of high significance in regards to unraveling the secrets of history. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Hey guys, so today I wanted to share with you a rather special out-of-place artifact. It's known as the Fisher Canyon footprint, and it's actually a lump of coal. However, this small lump of coal is something very special. It's an artifact we hold dear to our hearts here at Mystery History. 
Since its discovery in the early 1900s by a man named John T. Reed, a character we have actually covered in the past, it has been silencing skeptics and evolutionists the world over. John T. Reed was the man responsible for confirming native Indian legends of a race of red-headed giants that once terrorized the American continent some 13,000 years ago. When John found the Fisher Canyon footprint, he reported it to the New York Sunday American. The coal layer in which the fossil was found was dated at over 15 million years ago. Microscopic photography that was carried out by the Rockefeller Institute, presumably attempting to discredit the find, actually confirmed that it was indeed a heel print of a hand-stitched shoe, and that the fossil seemed to show the presence of two rows of stitches along the edge of the sole, with twists of thread clearly visible in the photography. The right side of the shoe also appeared more worn than the left, indicating that it was worn on the right foot. Crystals of mercury sulfide, collected during the analysis, only confirmed the fossilized shoe print's enormous age. After the test results were in, Samuel Hubbard of the Museum of Archaeology in Oakland, California, buckled to the sheer amount of conclusive evidence by telling the press, quote, Today's people are not yet able to make this kind of shoe. Facing this kind of evidence indicates that at the time of suspected uncivilized arthropods, millions of years ago people with high intelligence appear to have existed. Detail of the threads proves that it was the sole of a shoe and was strictly the handiwork of man." End quote. This is why we love the Fisher Canyon footprint so much. It sat in the back of museum collections for years, silently waiting for evolutionists and skeptics alike to stumble upon its existence only for it to then cast its spell of tremendous doubt upon their way of thinking. They can produce no real explanation for it. The best any mainstream scientists or anthropologists can do is ignore the evidence and conclude it's just a natural formation. Unfortunately, the footprint conveniently went missing a few years ago, even though by all accounts it was just a lump of coal. The story has also been hijacked over the years, with the Rockefeller Institute's test results subsequently vanishing. However, luckily for us, the quotes by Hubbard are in press archives all over the world. This small lump of coal is sure to fuel the argument for years to come. How many different civilizations, and thus different builders, have actually been and gone, only to be ignored by an academia wishing for their remnants to simply erode away? These remnants, many of which still existing ancient ruins, are visited by billions of people every year each attributed to a convenient imposter, a lie which conveniently ties in with previously printed, condoned, and currently preserved paradigms by superior influences, not only ill-informing the world's young population, but attempting to rob us all of our own personal histories. However, thankfully, some things do not lie, cannot be hidden, and will never go away. We share many ancient, out-of-place artifacts on our channel, some more perplexing than others, yet our next artifacts might be the most puzzling yet. Found in Kosovo, upon the Sharplanina mountain range, an ancient advanced artifact that has been explained as having once been some kind of transformer. Found by photographer and researcher Ismet Smiley, he subsequently donated a sample for scientific examination. It was found that the artifact is no less than 20,000 years old. In addition to the stone, coil, and copper wires, the artifact amazingly contains some form of ancient insulator, whose composition differs from the surrounding material. Although not tested, it appears to have mysterious convex bands fused into a stone. Parallel to these are four symmetrically located openings, which have been postulated to have been entry points for wires, these once collecting energy from the transformer. What is this mystifying object? What was it once used for? Who made it? And with dating results of over 20,000 years, just how much older could it possibly be? Could these objects have once been a common occurrence amongst this ancient civilization? Similar to the clearly advanced metal clamps previously covered and found upon numerous ancient block-built buildings throughout antiquity. Due to the sheer number of clamps used, although they are clearly a remnant left by a lost civilization far older than academia would ever attribute the buildings to, 
Many of the clamps have survived the eons to be tested, examined, and displayed in numerous different museums as more modern artifacts. Is this how this transformer survived? Was it due to the sheer number of them once in existence? Or is it possibly a very special rarity? Unfortunately, regardless of alternative advice, Ismet intends to donate it to academically funded scientists for, quote, further studies. We feel there is a high probability that the artifact may be lost or stolen. Regardless, it was thankfully photographed and is undoubtedly a very remarkable object. During such events as a pyroclastic flow, complete human forms can often be preserved in a fixed position, turned to ash in an instant. Someone turning into a stone fossil with age, however, was thought to be an impossible scenario. That was until 1898, when an extremely controversial discovery was made deep within a copper mine. Although several reports have surfaced over the years of this most peculiar of discoveries, only one has ever managed to stay around long enough to be officially documented. Deep within an old copper mine in Chukikamata, an ancient stone woman, complete with basket and tools, was discovered, and although a date of only 400 years was preliminarily given, it is clear to the many involved that she is far older than that. The discovery was examined closely by Jose Torobino Medina, a central figure in Chilean archaeology at the time. He described his findings as follows. The body is that of a female. The depth of the soil where the corpse was found was no more than 6 to 8 feet, and the miner was probably searching the mountain when a sudden collapse buried her. The miner, feeling that the mountain was breaking down, lifted her arms up to protect her head, the position in which her body is preserved. This discovery, although the only one of its kind, is highly controversial, and we suspect this may be because certain individuals are aware of its true antiquity. Beside the body were the remains of a basket, a stone sledgehammer, several stone shovels, sharpened pieces of wood, and a torn bag made of animal hide, all leading to the conclusion that this mummy dates from a very distant time within our history. After more recent analysis was conducted, it was discovered that it was actually a man, strangely. He also has an unusually shaped skull, and a green hue from sulfate and chloride within the copper. It is thought this may have been one of the contributing factors in his marvelous preservation. The Copper Man of Chukwikamata is extremely difficult to research, and although he is clearly of considerable historical importance, his whereabouts may continue to remain vague. Regardless of his known whereabouts, his existence will forever lend credence to a forbidden history here on our planet. <laughs>